It's more than just football. It's Orange Power. 12 bowl game victories, 26 All-Americans, two members of the NFL Hall of Fame, and the 1988 Heisman Trophy winner. Can you feel it? Inside Cowboy Football starts right now. Welcome to Inside Cowboy Football. I'm Dave Hunziker. You may have heard Oklahoma State's players talking throughout the game week in preparation for this contest in Columbia, Missouri, that the next step for the Cowboy football team was a big win on the road. Here in Columbia, Missouri, on this field, the Cowboys delivered the biggest road upset victory in the history of Oklahoma State football. Stick around. All the highlights, a visit with head coach Mike Gundy, and a chance for you to experience again OSU's big victory over the Missouri Tigers. It's all coming up on Inside Cowboy Football. Back, sets up, flushed, scrambling to the left, throws it deep down the far side for the end zone, and the pass is caught! Pistols firing! Touchdown, Oklahoma State! Damian Davis! But the reason you guys are having success is because you're learning to believe in each other and play one play at a time, okay? That's as big a win um, as in the history of this school. All right. You're watching Inside Cowboy Football. We're back on Inside Cowboy Football from the playing field here in Columbia, Missouri, where Oklahoma State defeated the Missouri Tigers in a big win for the Cowboy football team. And first of all, as we kind of work our way through the first half, the first drive for Missouri, they get it down to the one-yard line, you keep them out of the end zone. What did that mean within the context of setting the tone for the game overall? Well, it was really a big part of the game because when you start a game and they move the ball down the field, and then we get them down by the goal line and we're able to hold them out. You know, you give your team a lot of energy and uh, they felt good about it. You know, when they came off the field, they took an offense that uh, is as explosive as anybody in the country. And um, everybody knows the statistic had been 83 or 88 times without a three and out. Yeah, we almost right. got him a three and out first time. I know you did. And uh, tight end makes a great one handed mm -hmm. catch. Uh, but to hold them to three points there, even though they scored was a huge lift for our team. And you could see it in their eyes. What about the drive that followed when you were able to go right back down the field and score? Talk, if you would, about that drive because it was kind of an interesting mix of the run and the pass that got the offense cranking. Well, the offensive staff uh, did a great job in setting up the first drive and, and what we wanted to do to keep them off balance. And you and I had talked about this earlier in the week that their defense is not really getting enough credit. Um, we think that their defense is a lot better than what everybody else outside says. Um, we talked about number 12, 94, 96, number 1, uh, 37 or 38, whoever the end is. Mm -hmm. um, those guys run to the ball and they hit. And as you saw tonight, they're a very physical defense. And so we challenged our defense to be as physical as them and to somehow find a way to disrupt the quarterback. There was the potential for some huge momentum swings in the game, and some of those sort of occurred. But for the most part, you were able to hold them off. For example, late in the first half, they fail on two field goals, one blocked and one that came up short just before the end of the half. Talk, if you would, about the ability to keep them from sort of getting on a roll and the importance of that. Well, it was very important. And uh, the interesting thing is, is we failed on a couple. Well, so we true. almost, we almost uh, drew a stalemate there. But it's more important, in my opinion, for us to, to stop them because you're playing on the road. And at times, we kind of took the wind out of their sails. And you could see our guys continued to build momentum. And uh, you know, I said to the team in the locker room that uh, the, the defensive staff, their plan, and the way our team executed defensively and just played one play at a time and continued to work hard and rely on the guy next to him was as good as I've seen in 19 years of coaching. Why do you think the defensive plan was so effective? What was the, the meat of the scheme that made it work so well? well? I think that Coach Beckman and the staff deserve a lot of credit uh, for, for two reasons. First reason is, is because they've been challenged throughout the year. The second thing is, is their plan worked. 
I heard them talking about it on Monday. They wanted to mix up their blitzes, mix up the zone coverages, twist, stunt, bring guys off the edge, and try to be disruptive and catch him and break his rhythm. And it worked. The players bought in. It was a good plan, and it worked. First and goal from the five. Hand off to Washington. Left side, he's hitting the backfield and tackled for a two-yard loss back at the seven. Now he goes in motion left. It's a direction after Washington running on the left side, tried to pull his way into the end zone, and he didn't get it. Robinson in the shotgun takes a snap. Quick throw far side. It's caught. Des Bryant up the right sideline to the 37. Zach takes a snap, fakes a handoff, running on the right side. He'll get the first down as he sprints out of bounds on the right sideline. Split backs as Robinson takes a snap. Blitz coming. He throws quickly far side. It's caught for a first down in Missouri territory. Out of bounds at the 48-yard line. Takes a shotgun snap. Hands it off to Hunter. Big hole up the middle to the 40, 35, and tackled at the Missouri 34. Third and six. Zach takes the snap. Blitz coming, sets up, throws over the middle. The pass is caught by Des Bryant for a first down, a sliding catch at the Missouri 23. Zach takes the snap, fakes a handoff, keeps it running up the middle, and he dives into the end zone. Pistols firing, touchdown Oklahoma State, Zach Robinson. And Daniel takes the snap, fakes a handoff, drops back, fires over the middle, and the pass is dropped, incomplete. Second and 10, Missouri from the Tiger 23. Hand off to Macklin as he came in motion, and he's hit in the backfield on the left side and dropped for a three-yard loss. Third and 13 from the Tiger 20. Daniel takes a snap, drops back to pass, all kinds of time, throws far side. The pass is broken up. Was it caught? No. no. It falls incomplete. Three and for the out. first time. Season long, the Chase Daniel led Missouri offense three plays and out, and the Cowboy defense celebrates. You don't think those guys don't know that stat? We're back on Inside Cowboy Football. We continue our look back at Barry Sanders' Heisman Trophy winning campaign, the 20th anniversary of that season. And interestingly, Oklahoma State played. Missouri in week six in Stillwater. The Tigers tried everything they could to stop Sanders, but their efforts proved to be futile. You know, I, I, in all honesty, I was trying to remember. I, I don't recall, and, and the, the Missouri had pretty good people at that time, and I don't recall much about it. Uh, it, it it's, but this just kind of, and then those numbers, you know, 154 or so were, were not big numbers. I would imagine, you know, we figured up one time that he did not play in the fourth quarter about a third of the season. This probably being one of my, I don't have a real clear memory of that, but I, I'm sure but with looking at those numbers, we got him out of there pretty quickly and probably played good enough defensively where we didn't have to leave him in there right until the, the latter stages. Yeah, it was an easy game for, uh, for our team. Uh, I remember most about that is, uh, and I think that was the game where when it was over, I, I was reflecting back and, and think I played the game without Missouri ever touching me as the quarterback. And what I'm referring to, it was very easy for us to hand the ball pitched the ball to Barry. We made a couple passes to Art Lee Dykes. They tried to play some man coverage uh, and finished the game without them even touching me as the quarterback was pretty amazing. And the reason why was because of Barry Sanders and Hartley Dykes. Well, we were confident that we had a good football team. We had a very good team chemistry. Uh, and any time you have the those caliber of players on your team, guys that are potential NFL Hall of Famers, then obviously you should win some games. Uh, we had a very dedicated team and had some great players along with it. Sanders and the Cowboys returned home on October 22nd and didn't disappoint the Lewis Field faithful. Sanders scored two more touchdowns, including a 45-yarder. He finished the day with 154 yards on 25 carries as the Cowboys beat Missouri 49-21. A great story, a young man who really emerged from the shadows of the Oklahoma State defensive depth chart to become a big playmaker. Front and center this week, Cowboy linebacker Ori Lemon. Uh, it, it's, very, it's, it's a lot of fun for me being able to be out there with my teammates again. I'm uh, the greatest effort that I can give them. Was it hard to be patient to, to wait for the chance to get to play? Yes, sir. It was very hard being patient, but I was just being patient behind the backers who was experienced, just learning from what they was doing. Their mistakes are what they done. I wanted to be better than what they was doing last year, so I, I just learned from uh, being patient. 
Who helped you the most to get through that? Uh, Patrick Levine, my roommate. He just told me my time was going to come. And my brother uh, that passed, he used to always tell me, just be patient, it's going to come to me. How does a high school quarterback end up as a starting middle linebacker? See, what uh, many people don't know, I played defensive end my 10th grade year. So I was always defensive minded. I, when I went on the quarterback, it just carried on. And I came back over here where I belong. So, so you were completely fine, obviously. You always wanted to be a defensive guy. Yes, sir. But I, I just love leading the team. I understand you're one of the strongest guys on the team. Where were you a couple of years ago in terms of your strength, and where are you now? Is it, have you made a big, big jump in that? Yeah, I, I made a, a way big jump. I think when I got here, I couldn't do 315. But now I'm doing 435, thanks to Russell O'Connor. He always drives me up in the weight room. So that's who I compete against. What about just this defense and the improvement that, that's occurred? How much better are you guys now than maybe you were a year ago? Well, a year ago, uh, it wasn't the same type of effort that we was given a year ago, but we all just binding to the system, binding to Coach Beck's system. We all up in the film room. We all out here having fun, just uh, coming together as a family. Ori Lemon had 12 tackles in this particular ball game. Talk about not only his play tonight, but how he's progressed. Well, it's pretty good for a high school quarterback. Mm, uh, yeah. You know, Ori's from Jack Yates in Houston, and uh, when we went down to evaluate him, he's playing high school quarterback. And they actually had him playing some defensive end. And it's kind of funny, we always joke about it, that uh, when he was recruited here, he still thought he was going to play quarterback. Uh, that lasted for about one day. And uh, then we moved him to the defensive side of the ball. But he's a, another player that's uh, a really, really enjoyable story to, talk, to tell because uh, for a couple of years, he wasn't very physical. And uh, he's finally been in the program long enough now. I believe this is his third year. And in their third year, whether they're a redshirt sophomore or a junior is about when most players develop. Um, he, there was times that we didn't, we weren't really sure how committed he was to playing football. And he grew up, and that's that's what we do, and uh, that, that's where we get a big kick out of his coaches to see a guy like him to go from a high school quarterback to being a physical linebacker in the Big 12 Conference. Coming up, second half highlights when Inside Cowboy Football continues in a moment. We're back with Oklahoma State head football coach Mike Gundy as we continue our conversation about OSU's victory over the Missouri Tigers. Got the ball to start the second half and just a couple of plays into it, you hit the option big with Kendall Hunter. We needed to get the ball on the perimeter quicker. Um, we had come to the conclusion at halftime that uh, they're very big inside. You know, we talked about the two tackles, 300 pounders and they're physical. Guys are probably good enough to play at the next level. So we were able to win some of them, but not enough. And our staff said, okay, we need to do this, 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 this. And one of them was get the ball on the perimeter in the option and uh, let Kendall do what he does best and make a play, make somebody miss. And he played very well in the second half. So we wanted to get the ball out there to try to um, take advantage of or get away from their big guys inside. Missouri is able to come back and put together a long touchdown drive in the third quarter to regain the lead. But despite that, and again, some potential opportunities for shift in momentum, you just come right back. And how about Damian Davis yeah. with two big touchdown catches? Well, and they had a 95-yard drive. Uh, yeah. And at times, it, uh, you know, that disturbs your staff, defensive staff, and everybody that watches the game. But you have to remember, they're going to make some plays now. They're sure. good. And uh, their quarterback is very poised and made some plays. But then our offense came out and showed a lot of poise. Zach Robinson showed a lot of poise and made some plays. And we heard the offense up and we were able to catch him on a deep throw. And then Damian, who hasn't really done much in the first two or three games, is starting to show up now uh, in his ability and made some really big catches. You had the long TD reception that he had in the third quarter and then probably a pretty big point in the game. Andre Sexton gets the interception, runs it back deep into Missouri territory after a 15-yard penalty was tacked on. You're facing third and 12, and you hit the big play. Tell us about it. Well, it was, uh, it was obviously a great play. Zach moved around and, and got the ball up, and then obviously um, Double D, Damian, went up and made a, a great play. But uh, in order to win games like this against very good teams, players have to step up and make plays. And our commitment as a staff to our team is, is we're going to work tirelessly and give you a plan to have success if you'll buy in. You'll play hard and go make plays. And 
Zach moved around. Guys held the protection up long enough. He threw the ball down there, and he went up and got it done. Missouri gets a touchdown and closes it to five. They're on the move again. And tell us about Patrick Levine's interception that basically clinched the game. You know, I just walked off the bench. Uh, we were talking as an, an offensive staff and with the team about preparing for our two-minute offense and what we were going to do. And I and we were kind of settled in on it. And I thought, well, I got to go up and watch a little bit. And I just walked up there, and uh, and he dives in front of the ball and makes the catch. Uh, and he catches it and cradles it and goes down. And then the receiver got in my vision. So I never really saw the end of it, but I was almost certain uh, that, that he had made the catch. And then we got out there. We were trying to make a decision on what to do with the ball by how much time was left, timeouts. Could we let the clock expire? And then they went for the review. And of course, everybody was thinking, how are they going to review that? And I said, well, they're going to review it in a game like this just to make sure. But he made the catch. And uh, so obviously it benefited us, and then the rest is history. Hunter in a one-back set. Zach runs the option, pitches it to Hunter. Big hole, 35-40, down the right sideline to midfield. Hunter still on his feet to the 35-30, 25-20, 15-10. Good night, Vienna. Pistols firing. Touchdown, Oklahoma State. Kendall Hunter. Bailey strikes it. End over end kick. Taking a yard deep in the end zone by Mack. Left hash mark, straight ahead to the 10, 15, and he's smacked down at the 16-yard line. Daniel takes a shotgun snap, hands it off to Washington, left side, hit at the line of scrimmage and maybe got a yard. Three down linemen for the Cowboys as Daniel takes a snap. Three-man rush, throws far side, the pass is broken up, incomplete. Two receivers to each side. Hunter in a one-back set to Zach Robinson's right. Now he shifts over to his left. And Hunter gets a handoff up the middle, cuts to his left, 35-40, down the left sideline to midfield, and he steps out of bounds in Missouri territory. Takes a snap, fakes a handoff, drops back, throws over the middle, the pass is tipped, and it's intercepted at the 20-yard line. It went off the receiver's chest. Good snap. He steps into it, a high, booming spiral, angling toward the right sideline, bounces to the 20, goes inside the 10, inside the 5, and it'll be down at the 5 takes a shotgun snap, hands it off to Washington, hit in the backfield and dropped. High end over end kick, angling towards the left side, taken by Cox at the four. Straight ahead, 15, 20, 25, 30, and tackled at the 34. Zach takes a snap, sets up, fires over the middle, caught by Bowling. First down to the 45 and dropped just beyond the Cowboy 45 yard line. Robinson quickly takes a snap, fakes a handoff, drops back, sets up, throws it deep down the right side, the pass is caught by Pistols firing! Touchdown, Oklahoma State! On the shotgun, takes a snap. Fakes a handoff, and Daniel is smothered! He's smothered back at the 30-yard line! Takes a snap, fakes a handoff, floats it out right side, caught by Bryant. Has a first down to the 36, to the 40, breaks a tackle at the 45, and is tackled at the 46-yard line. Daniel back to pass, under pressure, hit as he throws. It's caught by Washington, and he is tackled all the way back in Missouri territory. 8.23 left in the fourth. Daniel gets a shotgun snap. Wants to throw, scrambling to his right, now going back to his left. Looks down the field, throws it deep over the middle. It's intercepted at the 16-yard line. The Cowboys have it, running up the right side, 30. Right side by 45, Andre Sexton into Missouri territory. Drops back, sets up, flushed, scrambling to the left. Throws it deep down the far side for the end zone, and the pass is caught. Pistols firing, touchdown, Oklahoma State. Damian Davis. Daniel gets a shotgun snap. First and ten, four-man rush, hit, throws it away toward the sideline. That'll be intentional grounding against Missouri. Daniel gets a shotgun snap, blitz coming, throws, and the pass is picked off. Intercepted, it's intercepted by the Cowboys, Patrick Levine at the Cowboy 31-yard line. We are back for a final time with Oklahoma State head football coach Mike Gundy, and now you come home and get ready for the Baylor Bears on homecoming. Well, it'll be uh, a, a big game for us. You know, Baylor is playing better, uh, and uh, uh, they have a good coaching staff, but our team is uh, excited and has played very well, and 
Uh, this is a great victory for us, and I want them to enjoy it tonight, enjoy it Sunday, uh, but then we have to go back to work on Monday. And we talk about this all the time, that you're only as good as your next game. And uh, in playing this game, we've got to get the guys back down to earth, and coach has got to work hard, get a solid game plan, and uh, get it instilled in the players, and uh, be ready to go next Saturday. Congratulations, Coach. We'll see you next week. Thank you. That's Oklahoma State head football coach Mike Gundy and for our entire Cowboy Television Network crew, I'm Dave Hunziker. Thanks for watching, and we'll see you next week.